He's the same today as he was yesterday. You can look at Norm Francis and you can take it to the bank. You can bet your life on him. You can never meet with Dr. Francis and go away the same as it was when you walked in the room. Whatever you meet with him is always a learning experience. Norman Francis is one of those extraordinary people in my life that I would say there's somebody worth emulating in anything that you do. Once you met him, or once you knew about him, you had better follow him along the way. That would be in your best interest to follow this man. I was born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, in fact, it's interesting, I was born right on Lafayette Street. My mom and dad uh, were both hardworking folks. Neither one graduated from high school, but they taught me all of the fundamentals that are uh, still used today and that uh, guide me in whatever I have to do, even in the toughest of decisions. I was taught by a nun, and she was kind enough to call Xavier and say, look, I got somebody who really ought to get a shot at it. Parents can't afford it but he's willing to work. We were always around the school. I can't remember a time when I didn't feel a part of Xavier. It was just family. We just thought of it being as another home for us. 40 years was easy because I had been prepped for 10 years. I knew the university. Uh, I did virtually every job you could imagine in administrative capacity. And I was young, I was very young. And so they felt that I, I was ready. Because of his character, that is one of the things that Mother David must have looked for lay leadership. Who would be able to carry that out? I said, Sister, that's the best decision you ever made. And it's going to benefit not only Xavier, it's going to benefit the whole city. I turned down the offer the first time. That day that Martin Luther King was assassinated, I accepted the presidency. That was an epiphany. The Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament made that decision. Now, I'm sure there were a lot of sisters who thought the university was going to hell in a handbasket because now you've got a lay president of the university. Once you can get people to sort of all sing from the same page and they understand what they are after and what we need to do, it's not difficult. 99.9% .9 of the time, his, his choices and directions were right on target and, and where we should go. He looked for quality people who had the same vision as he had. Not, pe not yes men, not yes women, but people who could sit around the table and, and offer positive suggestions. And that's what I like about him. He makes you feel your work. You never know what you can do if you're not allowed to do it. And he allows many people to just come out and do what they have to do. You're working with somebody you trust implicitly. You know uh, he's someone who will call it as he sees it, but he's someone whose judgment you respect. He wants people to excel. He truly believes that he needs a, a team around him to make things happen. Being a great team leader and bringing people together uh, is one of his greatest attributes. Xavier is strong not because I was there, but because a lot of people were there, and I knew who those people were. What a president has to understand is that uh, he or she doesn't know everything, and the best thing you can do is hire people smarter than you and get out of their way. When you face a catastrophe of any kind, two things happen. The adrenaline starts to work or you fall on your face. I knew we couldn't fall on our face. We had put too much into what this school meant, and we had just had the highest enrollment in our history, uh, had national publicity up until almost Katrina hit for what we were doing, and it was one of those reactions. We couldn't stop it, but we could do something about it. After Katrina, oh goodness, I don't know how he, I don't know how he overcame that one, but he did. He just shook it off and went on. He had enough foresight and vision to know that not only did Xavier have to come back, but it had to come back quickly. Dr. Francis was very driven to return the university to what it was prior to Katrina, and he kind of infused all of us with that vigor and that strength. We needed to be back on campus in January. 
When we first heard that, we were thinking January of 2007. We didn't realize he meant four months from now in January of 2006. And I think it was his enthusiasm and his zeal that made you go from the part of, well, I don't know if that's going to happen, to I think it is going to happen. Everybody else felt the same way. Uh, and the credit to the people who worked during that time, about 50 of us, I'd say 85% had lost their own homes. It was seven days a week. I mean, we were at it. I just think he's a man on a mission and that uh, he feels that uh, things have to get done and he's going to see to it that they get done. He never loses his zest for wanting to make each day better than the last. And what he has created at Xavier is a powerful academic institution. Xavier University is one of the finest universities in the country. And they have a particular reputation because their graduates go on to medical school at a higher rate than any other university or college in the country. That happened under Norman's leadership. He is somebody who cares, who's passionate about human beings. And so when you're with him, you have this great sense of, of, of awe about what he's accomplished. He has vision for everything, whether it's the campus at Xavier University, whether it's the vision to open the bank, in the years when it wasn't popular. He has given not only his vision to me, but he has taught me how to be a visionary over all of these years. When you just look physically at the campus, it is so much larger. Uh, he's brought uh, so many new buildings and disciplines to the university. It's almost hard to imagine somebody staying that faithful, that dedicated, that enthusiastic that inspiring for such a long period of time. He walks the campus and he talks to everybody, the students, the faculty, the staff, the janitors, the cleaning people. He's very approachable, very warm, very gracious. He's a very, very patient man. I don't know how he's got time to devote it to all, but he does, he finds time. Finds time for every child. Well, I think Mrs. Francis Fowler could best be described as his anchor. You know, when he gets through running all over the world and all the things that he's doing, when he gets home, there's somebody there that understands him. I just never made him feel like, you know, you can't do this because of me, because I knew it was something important. He had to do it. His conscience wouldn't let him go without doing it. He's got all the good traits that you would want in a husband, I think. And I think I'm the luckiest woman in the world. In my lifetime, treating people respectfully, it is the most disarming thing in the world when you deal with somebody who may be angry, mad, and you smile and say, well, maybe we have a disagreement, but you know, we don't have to be disagreeable. Simple as that. Treat people as you would want to be treated. Norman and Blanche, congratulations for 40 years as the first lady of Xavier University. And Norman, congratulations on 40 years of being president of Xavier University. We love you, Norman and Blanche. Thanks for everything that you do. Norman, congratulations on your 40th, and uh, may there be another 40 to come. I'm looking forward to seeing you. We've, we've traveled many roads together, and I'm looking forward to us traveling some more together. We're grateful to all you've done. We truly be grateful to everything you've done for us. If I were there, I'd talk personally about how you came into my life over 35 years ago after my dad passed away and how much your guidance and friendship have meant to me ever since. I love you. My heartiest congratulations, not only to Norman, but to his wonderful wife. And I hope to God that he stays in that position of leadership just as long as the good Lord lets him stay there. Dr. Francis, you once told me there's no duty more urgent than that of saying thank you. So tonight, I say thank you. Thanks to you and Blanche for your love and support throughout the years. Here's to you doing this for as long as you want to do it, especially if you keep doing it as well as you've done it for the last 40 years. We celebrate you, we love you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I salute you both for your, your total dedication and commitment to the students and the faculty and staff of Xavier University. Francis on 40 years.